Hey, what's happening, everybody? Hope everyone's having a great day today. So my name is Kevin, and today I'm here to talk about a new update to the Koala sampler uh, on the iPad here and iOS devices like your phone as well as Android now. Uh, they released an update that at first glance, it did not seem like it mattered to me that much. It says MIDI mapping update. So to me, reading that means that, okay, this is the biggest component of the update and the one that I guess is the main thing that uh, most people probably are looking forward to. Uh, I don't usually use a MIDI keyboard too much with my iPad here. I kind of, you know, like the idea of using it as a self-contained uh, musical instrument. Uh, sometimes I connect it to, you know, MIDI keyboards and things like that. But most of the time, if I need to use a keyboard, I have like my 88 key digital piano and I have a Roland Phantom to do keyboard type things on. Uh, I just think the touch screen on the iPad is just so cool that I can kind of use that uh, instead of the keyboard in most cases. But there are a lot of other updates a lot of other uh, features that were included in this latest update and i want to talk about these today and there's a few of them that are hugely important to me and i didn't even realize that so let's take a look so looking at the list of updates the first one is midi map effects transport tempo sequence and some sample controls okay next one is hold and loop can both be enabled at the same time didn't realize how important this is, but it's extremely important. And I was having just a blast with that feature. So we'll talk about that. Next is custom background image chooser. I've seen on some message boards, uh, some people saying how cool that would be if we can, you know, put a background of our choosing on this to kind of customize it. And the developers listened and they implemented it. And it's just as cool as you could imagine. Next one, edit a pad without triggering it. That's pretty good. So when you're doing a live performance or kind of doing something live like I usually do, maybe I want to edit a, a pad, but I don't want it to trigger while I'm pressing it. Uh, so you can now circumvent that. Next one, improved effects quality. So we'll see if we can hear any differences with that. Uh, added sort options for load screen. Another, you know, usability feature here which i think is huge uh being able to sort in your load screen so we're going to show what that's all about in a moment next one is fixed intermittent crash when exporting stems so a bug fix good good uh next is landscape mode on iphone i don't have an iphone so that's not that important to me although i wonder if land landscape mode on on android actually works now that might be the case i might have to check that out uh, updated audio bus library to latest version and enabled QWERTY keyboard shortcuts for iPad, same as Mac ones. Again, it's the last one. You're like, oh, okay, this is just an afterthought. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's actually a huge deal. All right, so let's get started. So I'm actually not, I, I don't have a MIDI keyboard. I mean, I do have one, but that's not what this video is about. So hopefully someone else can make one, or maybe I might make one eventually with uh, the MIDI mapping information on it. But for now, I wanna go straight to the hold and loop can be enabled at the same time. So let's talk about that. So usually, let me pull up a file on here. Let's go here. We have a, we have a, a loop, a sample right here. So if I press and hold this, when I'm doing my live performance, I, I usually do them on this screen and not on the sequence and perform screen, not yet. We'll talk about why that's the case in just a moment. But I usually would do something like this. So you get the hang of it. So I usually do that and that means I have to kind of be, my hands have to be on here at all times in order for music to be coming out for my audience, right? That's all well and good, but now, what you can do is I can press and hold one pad, leave loop on, and then I can press hold and watch what happens. So you don't see my hand because I'm doing just a screen share here. Okay. But this uh, really is dope because I'm not touching the pad anymore. Usually you have to press and hold the pad. Now you just 
press it and press the hold button and it'll just continue to loop. Why is that important? Well, you could, you know, let that loop and now I can go to the perform screen while a pad is just looping instead of a sequenced pad. Usually you have to have a sequenced pad uh, and something playing here and then go to perform and then you can use these awesome effects. Now I can do this. So that's a huge deal that you can do that. And the reason that I mentioned about the sequence screen is that when I'm doing my stuff on here, I haven't spent, I guess, enough time with it yet, but I'm. it's not that fun or easy or convenient for me to, to match the tempo. That's the issue. So for example, if I'm playing this and I'm like, one, two, three, four, two, two, I would try to, I'm gonna turn hold off. I would try to match this tempo if I wanted to like get this into the sequencer. I would have to do it this way. Go into tempo and one, two, three, four, two, two. I would have to be counting that and then do the tap. So let's see. One, two, three, and then let's do turn the metronome on. And then I'll have to test it like this. But I hear that it's off and then I have to come in here and record. Watch. So it's basically going to play, but it's not in time, and you have to keep tweaking it. And it's just not fun for me, quite frankly. And uh, I think Ableton and other, you know, big full fledged DAWs have the ability to, uh, what is that called? Not quantize, but um, warp, I believe, to like match the tempo of your sample to the tempo of your project. Maybe this might get that eventually, or maybe that's not something that is in the cards for an app that's all about sampling and, you know, the um, MPC type of a uh, um, influence, you know, and everything like that. So we'll see if it gets that. But for now, this is huge. Hold and loop together. Awesome, awesome stuff. So I definitely love that. And let's go to custom background image chooser. So now you're allowed to go into settings. So background, we can go choose image. And now if I want, I can put an image of whatever I want on here. So I can go in here and I can just pick any image like this. So now you change, look at that. I mean, it's pretty awesome that you can do that, even though you have, you know, you for me, I'm thinking not so much of an image, but maybe more of a design uh, because most of the image is going to be cut off and it's kind of pointless. So I'm, I'm thinking more so of using this for, and it even has a transparency effect over the empty grids, which is really dope. Look at the red ones here. You, you can kind of see through it. That's a really cool touch. Like I, I'm all about this. You can go here and you can see, you can see through it. Look at that. But yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna probably use this and like do like a nice design or something in the back. And then the next one is edit a pad without triggering it. So now if I want to, if I wanna edit a pad, if I'm like this and press a pad, it'll come up now and you can let go and you can edit it without triggering it. So I think why this is important is because, let's see, if I have hold set up, and I wanna edit a pad without kind of making it play while the other song is, while the other pad is playing, you can now do that. So let's see. So you can do that, that's looping, I'm not touching it now. So I believe I can hold edit and I can go into another pad if I want it. And now I can edit this without having it triggered. And one more thing, and see how it's playing still. You can go to sequence, you can hit play, and then play again to kind of get, get rid of it from playing. Or you can go, or to stop the current sample from playing. Or you can go back into the sample and tap it again, and it will stop playing that way. 
just so you know. Maybe eventually they might have like a button. I think that would be actually helpful to have like a button on here on this screen, like a force stop so that whatever you're playing or just like a not even a force stop, just a stop button or stop and play maybe. Yeah, that would be cool to have it on the sample page to stop and play. Eventually they might do that possibly. Okay, uh, improved effects quality. So that one, I'm probably gonna have to do some more testing to see, cause I don't, I haven't used, well actually when they say effects, they mean this, not even, not the performance. So let's, let's actually see. Um, so if we do like maybe resampling, but I think I'm actually recording this through the mic. So it's actually not gonna come out, not gonna work correctly. Yeah, but that I'll have to test and, you know, maybe let me actually you guys let me know in the comments if you've noticed a difference with the effects. I actually don't use the effects that much yet. I know that this is hugely important to kind of mix the stuff up a little bit, but I haven't really spent that as much time on those yet. But that's definitely something I plan on doing. So let me know if you guys notice a big or noticeable difference with the effects. Added sort options for load screen. So we're just going to do two more of these actually. Uh, added sort options for load screen, and then we're gonna go down to a pretty, pretty awesome one. So if we go to load screen now, we can load and we can sort by recent. So what's the most recent one you, I did? I, ed, I saved probably, and then here you can sort by A to Z, which is cool, and Z to A. So again, quality of life changes. And last but not least, if we load this up, now, I'm going to go here. So, what we can do now, now I really don't know why so many other apps don't do this. Like, I haven't seen this in like GarageBand and, and uh, Cubasis and Core Gadget 2 and Beatmaker 3, like all these other apps that I use. I have a QWERTY. Uh, Logitech MX keys sitting in front of me that I use with my iPad and I use my, with my desktop uh, interchangeably quite often and sometimes it's I do want to be able to like control transport or be able to navigate through page pages on my iPad without touching the screen this latest update lets you do just that so if you're connected to a QWERTY keyboard I can now trigger these pads by pressing numbers one through four, Q through R, A through F, and Z through V on your keyboard, which is the four by four leftmost uh, of the letters and numbers um, on your keyboard, it triggers the pads. Check it out. I'm pressing one, now two. So I'm pressing other ones that don't have anything on them. That's why it's going over there. When you have this in uh, portrait mode, it's it's a little bit easier to know what you're about to trigger because it just lines up perfectly four by four. Landscape mode, you have to know that the first four and then the next four handle. So you have to kind of do a little bit of you know thinking, but it's not too bad at all. So that's really cool. And then also to go from page to page, you can hit tab or you can hit I think shift tab to go back, which is really cool. Like being able to navigate, like I don't, again, I don't know why so many other apps don't have this feature, uh, but I think they need to implement it. And then play is a space bar. So again, that is major, major for me. For some people that use a MIDI keyboard all the time, this probably does not matter at all for them, but I'm just super appreciative of them implementing it in here. For people like myself all right so that's what i wanted to share uh i love this app i'm excited to continue using it and continue learning uh some cool ways to to kind of use it and everything this morning i woke up and there was a, a vox video on youtube that was recommended to me it was like a 10 minute video on jay dilla and it was kind of explaining his workflow a little bit uh, and his sort of way of sampling and unique way of sampling. And it just really inspired me to, to spend some more time uh, with this with this app and just kind of have fun with it. Uh, it's, it's a really, really, really fun app. And, you know, this is getting it one step closer. Like I haven't even, I don't use 
this app's like put drums and stuff on some of the pads, which is what I'm supposed to do. I want to spend more time getting some templates and things like that set up, but I don't, yeah, I don't use the, 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 the pads for that so much as I do just like putting songs in here and chopping up songs. I do it more so with that, which is so much fun for me, but eventually, you know, I think being able to do like a full fledged song and album kind of like Jay Dilla's Donuts album is is what I'm like thinking I might want to do on uh, on Koala Sampler here. So kudos to the de developers uh, for this app and keep up the great work and everyone else out there watching. If this is your first time on my channel, uh, definitely consider subscribing. I know you guys hear it all the time, but I'm going to say it again because I want mm -hmm. you guys to know that I appreciate you and I'm working hard on my content and I want this content to be reached uh, but I want it I want it to reach a lot of people so just appreciate you guys watching hope you guys are having an awesome day or awesome evening whenever you're watching this and I'll catch you guys next time all right later <laughs>